Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is happening. We are weeks away from the real USD stablecoin, of course, facilitated by Ripple coming to fruition. And we've spoke to you guys on a number of occasions about why this is such a big deal, but we're gonna be reiterating that in this video. So the first thing that I wanna do is actually play a clip of Ripple's CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, talking on a Japanese TV show about when Ripple is coming, when Ripple stablecoin real USD is coming to America, and then the fact that it is going to be coming to Japan. And if you've been following along with Ripple, you'll know that they are very much embedded within Japan. Now, Japan's an interesting demographic because there's still a lot of cash used in Japan. It's not such a massive number of the population that actually use digital currencies in their current form over in Japan, but I think this will change in the evolving world. But we know certainly in the West and the world more broadly, there is the absolute need for a stablecoin, the forms of digital currencies that I believe Ripple are going to be a key player in facilitating. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive in to this clip of Brad Garlinghouse talking on a Japanese TV show about Ripple's stablecoin launch. And you're coming here with sort of good news, I guess, for people who have been following what you do. You could be launching your stablecoin a bit faster than most people thought. Well, we've always been kind of consistent that we're going to launch, do everything we can to launch this year. Uh, everything Ripple does is in conjunction with regulatory approval, licensing, and so a key issue that we will continue to make sure we are partnered with U.S. regulators before we go live with the stablecoin. We'll first issue it, uh, we expect, in the U.S., but we think there's opportunity for stablecoins globally. And certainly Japan, as you, I think, probably know, they approved some legislation a year ago that came into effect this year. And so there's uh, a process underway now to do stable coins here in Japan as well. Yeah, I want to talk about that. But when we're talking about the U.S., we're talking about a matter of weeks for this launch. Yeah, our expectation has been to move as quickly as we can. Uh, and, you know, Some people, I think, thought that might be the very end of the year. We won't know for sure until regulators say, yes, we have the green light. Uh, but we're optimistic. We acquired a company uh, called Standard Custody, which had a New York DFS trust license. And there's a process you go through to kind of transfer that and how it's going to be used. We've had a great partnership with the New York DFS, Defense Department of Financial Services, through a bit license we've had for many years. Uh, and we'll continue to partner with them and work through that with them before we go live. Tell us a little bit about the use case. How does this really differentiate from your token itself? Because that's also been talked about the payment system, right? Right. We've always used XRP, uh, the, the digital asset that's kind of native to our technology stack. We've used that as a bridge asset to transfer money across borders. What we have found is that stable coins, particularly U.S. dollar stable coins, has gone from a pretty small market to today it's about $170 billion worldwide. And People think that that may end up being two to three trillion in about five years. Given Ripple's place in the payments infrastructure, as well as a trusted brand partnering with financial institutions and regulators, we felt like there's an opportunity to enter the stablecoin market as that market continues to grow. We already have used stablecoins in our payment flows for certain corridors, depending upon whether you're going to the Australian dollar, or the Philippine peso, certain corridors, it's more efficient to use a stable coin at times. So we always use what's best for the customer. And we decided to go live and build our own stable coin and uh, excited to get live with that this year. Thinking of building a stable coin here in Japan, I mean, you said that the regulations here were clearer, but at the same time, is a more of a conservative market, no? You know, I think Japan has been a more conservative market in some ways, but I actually think that in some ways is also really healthy. Uh, Japan, more so than some countries around the world, leaned in early to provide regulatory clarity and pass legislation, both about stablecoins, but even further back, I think 2017 or 2018, the FSA here in Japan issued clarity and a kind of a taxonomy, a framework for how different cryptos would be regulated. And that has really allowed, I think, entrepreneurship and investment to thrive here in Japan. Now, as compared to the United States, which has really been behind the, mm. certainly Japan and the UK and behind Switzerland, so a lot of countries are leading, and Japan has been in many ways one. That's not to say they haven't been conservative about the regulation, but I think that can be really healthy. As long as there's clear rules of the road, entrepreneurs will work within them. So if you're imagining a stable coin in Japan, what's the time frame? Well, 
I, I think right now Ripple in particular is focused on let's get live with the U.S. dollar stablecoin. Okay. But I think there will be – people will want to hold yen stablecoins, and I think that's only a matter of time. And I think the regulators here in Japan, again, about a year ago, passed some legislation around that. And there's some companies going through the licensing process right now to get live. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the real USD. And I think real USD was the perfect name for it. It kind of hints at what they're aiming for this stablecoin to be. The real alternative to the US dollar, the real stablecoin out there. We are weeks away from the launch of real USD Ripple stablecoin in the United States. And once it's gone live in the United States, which of course is the largest market as the dollar is the world reserve currency, we are going to see Ripple actually explore other stable coins and XRP is going to play a fundamental role in all of this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we haven't been one of these individuals that has just been mindlessly shilling XRP during its consolidation since 2017. We are highlighting what we believe is a massive opportunity with XRP based on where it's technically at. The other day we did a video talking about some comments the former CFTC chair had to say in regards to the dot-com boom. Now, the dot-com boom was really caused by an overzealousness and overallocation of capital to a technological revolution that hadn't quite had the infrastructure put in place to actually enable it. Things were very much oversold and underdeveloped. And Amazon from the dot-com high, around about 2,600 days later, essentially formed a similar consolidation period to what we've seen XRP go through since 2017. But do not fear, ladies and gentlemen, the moment is upon us where we believe it's going to that $19.27 price prediction. Remember, there is that $0.94 cents level that needs to be taken out for that pattern to be in execution mode. However, to go back onto the topic of stablecoins, this is a massive deal. Stablecoins are not that far removed from CBDCs, and we know the world is ultimately moving towards digital currencies, and Ripple are going to play that leading role, enabled by the United States, in much the same way that some of the largest tech companies in the world are enabled by the United States. One of the reasons the US is as big a superpower as it is, is because they own all the tech companies, the enablers of the internet and the data hoarders. And they ultimately use that to their advantage. In much the same way, they're gonna enable Ripple to do the exact same thing with digital currencies. Now, I wanna segue before we finish up on the stablecoin thing and actually talk about how this is just one way in which XRP is going to see real world usage and utility and actually enable a new financial system. We had news the other day that Ripple is or has XRP has enabled smart contracts on their blockchain. And ultimately, this is huge because this means tokenization can take place directly on XRP's ledger, XRPL. Now, I was lucky enough to interview Graham, the CEO of Archax, that spoke about his excitement on the back end of their partnership with Ripple about tokenizing money market funds and actually using them as a form of payments, which of course Ripple is a global leader in. All roads lead to Jerusalem, ladies and gentlemen. This is very much the case with Ripple and thus XRP. Stablecoins are just one aspect of what Ripple is going to enable with XRP. Will the value of tomorrow actually take place? They're going to be what sees everything move around. The remittance of all of this value take place. So if you think about this world that we're moving towards in regards to tokenized assets, a lot of that is going to take place on Ripple. They're already embedded with hundreds of institutions out there. In fact, we had news just the other day that 60 banks within Japan are trialing out XRP ledger but they are really in this lead role in regards to the tokenization space enabling it facilitating it and allowing it to work and interoperate this is huge because there are hundreds of trillions of dollars that are going to be enabled by the xrp ledger and what's the value of a blockchain that facilitates all that if you could monetize and tokenize the internet which is why i love that example in regards to amazon what it went through post dot com crash and what XRP is currently going through today, because there was a real movement with Amazon in regards to revolutionizing e-commerce in much the same way that Ripple's ledger, the XRPL, 
is revolutionizing how we transact value. XRP is going to be an underlying part of tomorrow's financial world in more than one way. And if you think about hundreds of trillions of dollars being ran and operated and tokenized and facilitated on XRPL, what's the value of that blockchain? Well, there's many sort of speculations in regards to it. If there were hundreds of trillions of dollars, that means Ripple's ledger would need to be worth quite a lot of money to actually enable that to take place. And this is where you get into some of those crazy price predictions out there in the hundreds of dollars. Now, we are not predicting that. We think $19.27 is a great price prediction that we're ultimately holding XRP to see come to fruition. Remember, that's technically signaled on the pattern that we are currently looking at. But the stablecoin news, ladies and gentlemen, cannot be understated. This is a massive step in the right direction for XRP in the sense that we know digital currencies will be adopted. We see stablecoin regulation coming out more broadly across the world, the US being a little bit later to the party. However, they will adopt stablecoins for the reason that they are simply better than the current financial system that we have in place. The current currency system that we have in place is very old and clunky. And of course, Ripple's XRPL was designed to solve this problem entirely. Now, we have done a previous video where we looked at some comments solving the US debt crisis. Right now, the US has $35 trillion in debt. And the beautiful thing about stable coins is that they can actually be backed by this debt, which provides a significant demand for it. Not only that, it furthers the US dollar's role as a global world reserve currency across the world. If you look at many countries out there, a lot of them already have dual currency systems where the dollar is used, given its more stable nature. And actually, stable coins are going to propagate and further this agenda. And this ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, is why Ripple's technology, XRP, is going to get adopted and ultimately facilitate trillions in stable coins alone and hundreds of trillions in tokenized assets and the moving around of those assets, all on the payment rails of XRP. This is absolutely huge, ladies and gentlemen. We see clues to this future all over the place. Many major banks, including Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, and many of the others, have either tried out XRPL or mentioned it in some form or other. Bank of America had a patent on it at one point. You know, the signed. The writing is very much on the wall, ladies and gentlemen. And the cherry on the top for us is in regards to technically how Ripple is setting up. There is an opportunity here, ladies and gentlemen, that we don't want anybody to miss out on. However, of course, this is not financial advice. Nothing we say or do on this channel is financial advice. You've got to make your own decisions up and invest in what you see merit in. And for me, XRP ticks many, many boxes. So it is happening, ladies and gentlemen. We wanted to drop a video on the appearance that Brad Garlinghouse just made. The pieces of the puzzle are very much coming together. Tomorrow's world is going to be one where XRP plays a key role in regards to the economy of tomorrow. That is it from me, ladies and gentlemen. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next one.